So the wire came on a roll and I don't have a, uh, a dedicated commercial uh, wire, what do you call it, roller, so I just built one myself. Just like that. Perfect. <laughs> Very creative, Yelker. Thank you. <laughs> Is that your concentration face? Yeah. Ooh. For our dining room chandelier. Hi everyone, I've just finished drilling through the trickiest spots in our cabin. Um, I think the hardest was the, uh, the stacks of studs upstairs for our structural posts that carry the ridge beam. Um, and there were six, seven or eight studs next to each other. And uh, it took me quite a while to get through, but I learned a lot while doing it. And I thought it would be interesting to uh, share that in case anyone out there is uh, finds themselves in the same position where they need to drill through a lot of wood and they're not quite sure how or what to use for it. So for most of the holes, I opted to get one of these, which is an auger drill. Um, this has a 7 uh, shank and that fits your regular powerless drill like this one. You can use it either on um, uh, low RPM or high IPM, I found that it didn't make much of a difference. And these are definitely the best, fastest, and um, most efficient drills to rough your, uh, your or to drill your electricity uh, rough in holes. And the reason being that this one, um, it has the, uh, the tip, the screw tip that uh, feeds the, the drill into the, the wood. So it pulls itself forward and it has these flutes here this groove 
that takes care of um, getting most of the sawdust away from the drill tip, which slows you down. Now, unfortunately, this one is only about seven and a half inches long. So that was not enough to get through my, I believe, 12 or 13 inches of um, studs that were positioned next to each other. And for that, I picked up various things because I also had a few uh, very narrow stud spaces uh, where I couldn't fit my drill and the auger bit. And I didn't want to go out and buy a right angle drill just because it was for the electricity and it was a big expense. So instead, what I did was I picked up this right angle drill adapter, or it's actually an impact driver right angle adapter. This one's made by DeWalt, but there are several, uh, several brands out there that have one. Um, with this one, I made sure that I always use my drill on the low RPM, just to not overload the ball bearings in here. And I, um, I felt it frequently, if it was getting too hot, I would put it aside and uh, continue with something else. But this one was perfect in very narrow stud spaces. So that combined with, um, they're called, they're like these, they're called uh, stubby spade bits or paddle bits. And they're the extra short version of the, the usual size. Uh, I believe these are about four and a half inches long. And these were perfect combined with the right angle drill adapter to get me through the, the trickiest, narrowest stud spaces. So this was excellent together. Then next, if I had another situation where I only had clearance for this and then a little bit more, I would drill this into the wood like so. And then I had a six inch um, extension bit or uh, what do you call it? Yeah, just six inch drill extender. And you just click it on here like so. And that would allow me, me sometimes with the, the right angle drill adapter, sometimes with the, sometimes with the drill right on, on uh, the back of this to get further into the wood. And then for my uh, six or eight studs, what I did was I would get this into the wood with a 12 inch version, clip this on like so, get this all the way into the wood and then clip on my six inch, get me even further into the stud space or into the, uh, the post. And then that would get me through um, most of the way. And then for the final part, I would take off my stubby and take the same size of paddle bit, but the longer one, get this on, and then I would definitely go through the whole uh, post. And for pretty much any tricky spot, I use a combination of these five pieces. Now the cost was way below what a right angle drill would have cost me. I believe this was about 35 Canadian dollars. These came in a set of three, the, the stubby ones, in a set of three for about 12 Canadian dollars. The regular came for, I believe, eight Canadian dollars. This one was 15 Canadian dollars, this one was 17 Canadian dollars. So all in all, it was less than $100, I think. I have to do the math. I'll put it on the screen. Um, but it was still less than a third of what a right angle drill would have cost me. And I would have still had to buy more um, different drill bits and whatnot. But my favorite still remains the auger bit.
I'm currently doing the, uh, the wiring circuits towards the kitchen and the bathroom. And for the bathroom, I have to get my wire in a 90 degree angle through this channel here, which of course is uh, fully enclosed on all four sides. So what I'm doing is I'm using a little bit of um, just uh, regular steel wire and I make that into a fishing wire. So I've drilled my holes everywhere and um, I just bend a little loop on my wire like so. Curl it in kind of a 90 degree. And then I gently slide it through the wall until and keep poking it until I can feel it with my pinky in the cavity. Well, it's not so much a cavity because it's filled up with insulation material, but I've drilled that out into um, a hole. So I should be able to feel the wire towards the middle. And sometimes there's still some insulation material in the way, so it's a matter of poking it from all sides until you've got it clear. Some wood chips. So yeah, it's a matter of being patient, keep trying, fish that wire through the wall, like through the channel. There it is. Sometimes you get lucky and you can push it right through, like I did here. And then I just hold it in place until I'm ready to pull the wire through. Because I've got one more fishing wire to uh, fish. Okay, so the next step after I have um, fished my wire through this corner piece. I take the wire that I want to pull through the corner and unfold that little hook, take some electrical tape, and we just tape the wire to our fishing wire. And make sure you use plenty of tape so that it doesn't come loose while you're pulling it through the wall. Like this. And now it's just a matter of very gently giving the wire a little starting curve. And pulling it through the wall with some patience. Like so. And that's that.
these locks make it extra bear proof and <laughs> open it without using the lever and yeah because bears are all around <laughs> Shack find. <laughs> I think it's for a candle. Uh, yeah, no, you can put that back. <laughs> <laughs> I really like this idea though, it's very nice. Hi everyone. Just a, uh, a quick walkthrough of all the work I've done yesterday. So, yesterday I did a lot of pulling wires, pretty much nothing but pulling wires. And um, it was quite intense because I did the uh, the wire for the kitchen stove. I did uh, bathroom wires for the dryer and for uh, receptacles in the kitchen. So they were all heavier gauge wires, which were a lot uh, stiffer and a lot heavier to pull through the wall. But I made it work. So let's have a look at what I did. So over here is um, so over here is a receptacle box and. It looks a little messy because I have all the, the wires still uh, coiled up. But they're all labeled, I know exactly which one is which. And um, eventually I'll get these into the box, ready for the inspection. Um, but for now I just keep them stringed up here. And then from the box they leave right here in the, the higher part because they go up towards the ceiling. And I ran them through the stud spaces here except for the stove which comes down over here and then they continue their way to the kitchen so let's take a walk to the kitchen or let's do a quick stop in the bathroom over here in the bathroom they exit from the wall and they run through this bathroom wall right here this is the dryer uh, the dryer wire, the orange one. And then I decided to do the receptacles with 12 gauge instead of 14 gauge, just because I had a lot of 12 gauge. And then continuing, we go over here through the wall. And so now we're in the kitchen. They come from the bathroom right here, run through the wall all to their locations. And of course, I still have uh, lots of work to do on um, pulling the wires into the boxes, getting everything wired up. But I decided to focus on one job at a time, and that was pulling wires. And then today, I'm going to continue with pulling wires to the receptacles throughout the cabin on both floors. Um, same thing, I have a lot of 12 gauge wire left, so I'll use 12 gauge instead of 14 gauge which is totally up to code, it's above code, and why not?
fire comes in. <laughs> yogurt just did the grounding right there all the way around the screw so we don't get zapped and so the box is fully grounded and there's positive contact with the incoming and outgoing grounding wire the outgoing wire mind you this is one plug how many plugs do we have 20 25 oh. something like that how Yalgar is wearing safety goggles after getting that one metal splinter in his <laughs> eye <laughs> he now always wears safety goggles when metal objects are flying around you bet although he can now be seen using a sharp knife close to his leg <laughs> experience <laughs> I'm completely in Yelger's way while he's trying to ground the second screw. I will get out of here right now. <laughs> now he's using a little cap to connect both of those uh, wires. Yeah, wires, but what kind of wires? These are the bare copper. Grounding. Grounding, that's the word. Connecting the grounding wires with a little cap. Oops. And I think you're there, hey? Well, no, gotta do it again. I gotta add a piece of copper. So the plug gets grounding too. Oh, and then ground those two to the plug. Pigtail. Yes. Very well, Yelger. Not using his leg. <laughs> That's a wire cutting board. And another cap. Well, because I'm using three wires, I gotta use a bigger cap. Oh. Tinkering. A lot of wires in a tiny box. Uh, 
Now apparently the reason you have to stuff all of the wires in the box like that is because you use a cutting tool for drywall and you want to make sure that there is not a single one of those wires sticking out. So the drywall cutout tool you go about to the center only a quarter of an inch deep that way you don't hit the wires. You go to the edge of the box, hop to the outside of the box and then you just follow the outline, cut out your drywall and it'll be nice and flush. Part of the electricity is our outdoor light. So Yelger is installing that. The word is sturdy AF. <laughs> yes, it is. This is what that looks like inside. Weather tied and structural screws. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We won't be able to use it for a while, but now it's in place and we won't be accidentally breaking it or <laughs> misplacing it. I will get a light bulb. Ta-da! I've finished all of the water supply lines in the cabin and I have hooked it up to uh, the stub outs for the sinks and the shower valve. So the next project that I'm going to tackle is this right here, which is uh, getting these wires for all the circuits throughout the cabin into our panel, which is behind this door right here. Uh, it's going to be quite the job because I've got uh, lots of wires to uh, prepare, lead in, hook them up to the circuit breakers, and um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Safety first. So first thing I'm doing is disconnect the power from the cabin right here at where the uh, power enters the uh, main feed of our cabin. I should do it. Oh, hello there. I was just finishing up this electrical panel. <laughs> so I finished up our electrical panel. All of our circuit breakers are in place and we've even electrified a couple. Don't worry, I had a permission from the inspector. Uh, part of it is for testing purpose, part of it is just for functionality because we also removed our construction receptacle here. And um, yeah, things are working fantastic. So, very happy. Oh, hello there. I was just finishing up. <laughs> Can I get a retake? <laughs>